Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a new tutorial on how to use the easy audio visualization software version 1.6. If you're someone who uploads a lot of music to your channel, maybe you're an artist like myself and you want to bring a lot of new life and energy into the visual aspect of your music, then this is definitely the application that you'll want to take a look at. If you're watching this video, chances are that's because you want to learn how to make visualizations like this and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is to click on the project button in the top left corner and click new. Uh, this will create a brand new project and as you can see we have a completely blank canvas. Uh, at the very top up here is your timeline. This will move from left to right and represents the length of your project. So when we add a new audio file this will be the length of the audio file. So if it's 2 minutes and 30 seconds then the timeline will be 2 minutes and 30 seconds. You can click wherever you want in this timeline to get to where you need to be in your project. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the audio tab. We're going to click on where it says click to add file and we're going to add a brand new audio file. I'm going to add in a project of mine that I worked on a few years ago called Ataraxi. You can change the speed of your audio by clicking this down here where it says audio speed. It can go up to uh, 1.5 times the, the original speed or it can go down to 0.75 times the original speed. We're going to keep this at a speed of 1 for now. You can also change the smoothness of the bass values and the visual values of the music but I'll show you how to do that in a minute. You can also tick this box if you want to change the values of the uh, visualization using your microphone which again I'll show you how to do in a minute. You'll notice at the timeline there are these three buttons up here. These control automation which basically controls various changes in certain elements in the project, for example, uh, visual changes in the graphics, the particles, uh, the text, things like that. But I'm going to cover that in a separate tutorial, so keep a lookout for that. I'll leave a link to the next tutorial in this video and in the description. To hide the timeline, you can click the clock icon in the top right corner. And if you wish to delete an element, you can click the bin icon and this will delete a certain element based on whether it's a graphic, a particle, a text or something like that, which we'll take a look at in a minute. So the music sounds good, but now we need some visual elements. The first thing to do is to add a graphic. So we're going to click on the graphics tab and click add. And the first thing that comes up is a glowing white square, which is not what we want. First thing we're going to do is we're going to add an image. So I'm going to click where it says click to select new file. I'm going to find some artwork that I want to use. I'm going to find the artwork that corresponds to this track. So here's the artwork for this track, but it seems to be jumping around quite a lot and it seems to be glowing quite a bit. And that is because of the default camera effects. So to change that and make it a little less glowy and jumpy, we're going to go into the camera effects tab up here and we get a variety of options down here. I'm going to bring the project back to the drop in the timeline, which is here. I'm going to turn down where it says light brightness to turn down the amount of uh, brightness and the amount of flickering here. So you can see now this is flickering a lot less if I turn this down. If I turn this up there's obviously a lot more flickering. And the flickering is in response to the bass values in the music to give it a lot of energy. You can change the value of the light colour as well but I'm going to keep this as a white light. You can change the amount of shaking that the camera does by changing this value here. We're going to make it so it only shakes just a tiny bit. You can add a vignette effect by changing this slider. You can also change the colour of it by clicking on vignette colour and then clicking done. You can also add a film grain by changing film grain intensity and film grain type. So you can now see there's a lot of static in the video which I'm going to remove because I don't like it very much for this project. You can also change this thing here called chromatic aberration which basically separates the RGB values into layers in the project and you can see this also reacts with the music. You can change the amount of saturation in the image. You can also change uh, how much the saturation changes. And down here this last box on the right allows you to change what frequencies um, affect the visual changes. So right now the music is jumping about because of the sub bass values in the music. But we can change that to be just bass values, to be mid values, to be higher values like presence, brilliance and the very high, high frequencies. Right now I'm going to keep this as sub bass and I'm also going to turn down the light brightness and flickering just a little bit more because it's still a bit too much. You can see that because the project is not very smooth it's jumping about in such a way that could give our audience a little bit of a headache. So to change that we're going to go into the audio tab and we're going to increase the bass smoothness and you can see now the camera shaking is a lot smoother. If you want to remove this image we can go back into the graphics tab, click on our graphic which has been named graphic 1 and we can click this bin icon up here. 
we click OK, the graphic is now gone. If you want to change the size of a graphic, you can click this arrow in the top right corner and you can now drag the sides of this square to change the size. You can snap the square so that it's in the middle of a project using these red lines as a guideline. You can also click this cutout option at the bottom to turn it into a circle. If you want to get rid of this box, you can just click the arrow icon again. You can also choose a video file if you wish. All you need to do is go on to click to select new file and change this option down here from image formats into video formats. You can then choose a video file. So for example, I'm going to choose this one here, which is a spinning sphere of some kind, very sort of dancey. The image and the video file will be affected by the glow effects in the track. So if you want to make the video file ignore this, you can click on the option that says ignore light under shader. You can also make the video file transition through a variety of different colors by clicking the color transition box. If you want to change what colors this transitions through, you can click this gradient option and you're greeted with a box of colors. This box represents the colors that are transitioned through. So for example, this video is going from red to yellow, to green, to cyan, to magenta, and then to red. If you right click these colors, you can get rid of those particular colors. So now it's just gonna be red. If you want to add a new color, you just left click underneath this bar and you get access to a new color. You can then drag this by holding left click and moving it around. You can then left click this uh, color to change the color. I'm gonna make this into a cyan color. So now the project is going to transition from red to cyan and then to red. If you left click above this color bar, you get the option to change the alpha value of the color. Right now, I don't want a color transition, so I'm going to click cancel and that will revert it back to what it was. I'm gonna untick color transition so it stays as what it was. You can keep a solid color for the project as well. If you leave color transition unticked, but you click the color box, we can now change it so it's just red or cyan or black, for example. To add a visualizer, we're gonna go into the visualizers tab and we're going to click add, and this is going to bring up our visualizer. You can change the type of visualizer from a line to bars that move around to a surface, very similar to what Trap Nation uses. I'm going to use bars. You can change the bars to be more rounded, and you can also change the shape. So instead of a circle, it is a straight line, which is what I'm gonna be using. You can change the thickness of this particular line, which doesn't really work very well for the, um, for the line option. You can change the width of the bars by changing this cube width option. You can change whether it's affected by glow effects in the track. You can make it so it's affected by one color. If you tick the use glow, option then the visualizer will start glowing which is extremely vibrant you can change the height of these bars by changing the height option you can see as the music gets louder these bars get a lot taller you can change the number of segments you can change the number of samples used in this particular section you can change whether it is being mirrored you can invert or reverse the bars as necessary what we want to do is we want to change the size of this visualizer so to do that we're going to click the arrow option in the corner we're going to drag the edges of this visualizer so they match the size of the project and then we're going to drag this down with the red line. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to increase the height, I'm gonna increase the number of segments, I'm going to reduce the cube width so it looks a little more flush. I'm gonna make sure this is right at the bottom of the project. You can see that because the camera's shaking that the visualizer moves in time with the beat of the music, which we don't really want, so I'm going to get rid of that by going back into camera effects and turning off the camera shaking. Once you have a visualizer like this, you can essentially play around with it to find what you think works for your video. Personally, I want this to glow a little bit more. So actually I'm going to increase the light flickering effect and then go to the drop by going into the timeline at the top and finding the drop of my track, uh, which is here. Then I'm going to turn up the light flickering and see what we get. Everyone will have their own tastes, but personally I think it looks good like this. I'm going to add a tiny amount of camera shake you can also add particles into your project. So to do that, we're gonna go into the particles tab and click add. You'll see a variety of multicolored particles appear in the project that move in time with the music. You can change these to be snowy particles. So now there'll be snow falling from the sky. You can change it to a wind ball, which is one of my favorites. If you change the size of the wind ball, you can make it look more like an NCS visualizer. You can also change it to be wobbly, which appears quite glitchy at first, but actually just turns into this more wobbly effect similar to the wind ball, or you can change it to use stripes, which need to take up the full space in the screen. So I'm going to stretch this out. You can change the amount of particles, the amount that they are boosted by the music, the speed at which they travel, the speed at which they are boosted. You can choose to have a gradient or no gradient. 
you can make them glow, which is again extremely vibrant, so be careful of this one. Personally, I just want a few particles like this, so I'm going to turn down the amounts, the speed and the boost. I also like the fact that the cyan colour is very similar to the visual in the middle of the screen, so I'm going to keep that. You can add text into your project and this uses the fonts that are installed on your computer so if you want to you can use custom fonts. I'm going to go ahead and use a custom font called ROG fonts. So for example you can have your name underneath the project like this like many artists have and the text will also glow in response to the music. You can also add a timestamp if you wish to see the length of the project so far. You can also add dancers into the project like this. Instead of using a single audio file, you can also use playlists, which are a collection of audio files, or you can use what your system is currently outputting if you want to see visualizations live, which is also true for the microphone. If I change this music smoothness value, you can see that the visuals now become a lot smoother and a lot less responsive to the music. You can see now during the drop, they don't react as much. But if I turn this down, then they start to get extremely reactive. I'm going to keep this here because I like them to be relatively smooth but also very energetic so that the energy is still conveyed a lot through the visuals. If you want to pause your project at any time you can click the pause button here or you can also press space to pause the project. You can mute the project whilst the project is still playing by pressing this button on the right. You can restart the project by clicking this button on the left. And if you want to check out this tutorial again, you can click the tutorials button, which will take you directly to my channel. Please subscribe. The last thing we need to talk about is rendering. You can render all the way up to 4K at 120 FPS. You can choose an audio bitrate all the way up to 2116 kilobits per second. And you can also change the rendering speed from highest to lowest without changing the quality of the file. If you're not sure what something does, you can hover your mouse over it and it will come up with a little text box. If you want to disable an element, then you can click this green box down here. So for example, this will disable the text. And then if you left click it again, it will reappear. If you click the settings option in the top right corner, you can change the language of the project, the volume of the application, how often the project is auto-saved, whether it's full screen or windowed, and the resolution of the project. When you're ready to render the video, just hit start and you'll be prompted to choose a location to save the video. Last but not least, do not forget to save your project by clicking save as and choosing somewhere to save it. The project will be saved as an EAVP file. And that's pretty much everything you need to know about how to use this software. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up as the support is greatly appreciated. The next tutorial on automation will be coming soon. And until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon. Bye.